Welcome to How to Complete the Retirement Application. This presentation is designed to help you understand the paperwork that must be completed in order to retire. But before we begin, the Consolidated Benefits Office would like to be the first to congratulate you in making one of the hardest decisions of your career with Virginia Beach City Public Schools, deciding it's time to retire. With that being said, Let's complete the retirement application together. The first form required to be completed is the separation of employment form. To begin, in the first paragraph after I, write or type in your full name followed by the statement, wish to separate my employment with Virginia Beach City Public Schools for the following reason. You should then check retirement. Then go down to where it says, if approved, my last day of employment will be. You would enter the last day of the month prior to your retirement date. Next, fill in your home address with the complete street, city, state, and zip code. If this is a new address, you would check the box. Followed by the non-Virginia Beach City Public Schools telephone number, and a non-Virginia Beach City Public Schools email address. Next, you would write or type in the school in which you work and followed by your position. Now let's take a minute to look at the next sentence. It indicates to check the following statement if applicable. I have summer deferral pay and I elect to have a payout. If you check this box, you will not receive your paycheck over the summer months of July and August. Instead, you will receive your summer pay in your last working paycheck prior to your retirement. Now let's go down to the bottom of the form where you will be signing the form followed by your employee number, which is called the WISE number, and date the form. Prior to submitting this form to Human Resources, you would need to obtain the signature of your principal or department head, followed by them dating it as well. The next form is the Employee Data Sheet and Years of Service Certification form. The information obtained will be used by the Consolidated Benefits staff to capture what division you have your creditable years of service with and to confirm your eligibility to receive the employer's contribution towards your health insurance. In Section A, you would put your last name, followed by your first name, and then your middle initial. In Question 4, you would put your desired retirement date followed by your date of birth, your gender, and then you would check schools for your employee's status. Then enter your ID number, which is your WISE number, followed by your Social Security number. Section B is your contact information. This section will be used to enter your contact information into the retiree database maintained by the Consolidated Benefits Office and will be used in contacting you after retirement. In line 10, you would put your street address followed by address 2, which is your apartment, your unit, or lot number. In line 12, you would put the city followed by the state and your zip code. In line 16, you would indicate your home phone number. If you do not have a landline, please leave this blank and complete line 17, which is your cell number, followed by a non Virginia Beach City Public Schools email address. On line 19, this is where the person that you would want us to contact in cases of emergency by putting your contact information's name and their phone number. Section C is where you would certify your years of service. You would need to check the statement that best describes you. The options are that you are retiring from the City of Virginia Beach or retiring from Virginia Beach City Public Schools. And lastly, you have combined years of service with the City of Virginia Beach as well as Virginia Beach City Public Schools.
As VRS benefits are not paid automatically, you must submit a retirement application and other documents to initiate your monthly retirement payments. To set your application process in motion, start by entering your Social Security number, followed by your desired retirement date. As you can see, you would only enter the month and the year, as the first is pre-populated for you. Question 3 you would only check 1 that this is your original application or it is your revised application. Part A is your member information. On line four, you would put your first, middle, and last name followed by your complete address of your street, city, state, and zip code. You will now need to check yes or no if you are a Virginia resident. Next, you will need to indicate your U.S. citizenship of U.S. citizen, resident alien, or non-resident alien. In box 8, you would indicate your true marital status of never married, married or separated, widowed or divorced. If you check divorce, you must also provide your final divorce date. This should always be followed by your phone number, your birth date, and a non Virginia Beach City Public Schools email address. Line 12 asks, do you intend to make a lump sum purchase of service credit prior to retirement? Your answer could be yes or no. Line 13 asks, will you be purchasing service credit by using your sick leave? This option is irrevocable if you check yes. On line 14, you would leave this blank or check no as this is only intended for VSDP participants. Line 15 asks if you will be terminating all full and part-time employment as of your retirement date indicated on line 2. This should always be answered by checking yes. Let's start the next form by entering your Social Security number in box 16. Next is Part B, your payout option selection. In Box 17, you must check only one payout option. There are three options, the basic benefit or the basic benefit with a partial lump sum option payment or the PLOP. The survivor option, with this option, you must enter a whole number between 10 and 100% that will go to your named survivor upon your death or the survivor option with the partial lump sum option or the PLOP. Lastly, the advanced pension option. With this option, you must enter the age in which you want the increased benefit to stop. It can be between the age of 62 or when you become entitled to a full Social Security benefit. Please be mindful that the option that you elect is irrevocable with the exception of the survivor option under certain circumstances. Line 18 is in regards to your payout option. If you elected an option that included the POP payout, you must check the number of months in which your POP amount is based on. It can be 12, 24, or 36 months. Next, you would need to indicate if you intend to roll over your POP funds into an IRA or another qualified plan. Part C is your survivor information only. Only complete this if you have indicated the survivor option in Part B. If you did, then you need to indicate on line 19 the, your survivor's name. Indicate the relationship of your survivor in box 20 followed by your survivor's birth date and your survivor's social security number. Then your survivor's gender, followed by your U.S. citizenship of your survivor, which could be a U.S. citizen, a res resident alien, or a non-resident alien. Part D is the certification. Carefully read the certification statement, sign and date your application. You can sign it 
at least 90 days or no more than 120 days of your desired retirement date. If you checked married or separated in Part A, your spouse must also complete and sign the certification section. If you've marked married or separated and you cannot obtain your spouse's signature for any reason, you must include a written statement explaining why you were not able to obtain his or her signature. The next form that should be completed is if you elected a plot payout option. Prior to completing this form, you may want to seek the advice of a financial planner or a financial advisor. To complete this form, you would write in your Social Security number in Box 25. Part E is where you can check notifying VRS that you do not have an existing account at the time that you're completing your application and VRS will request this information from you prior to receiving your first retirement check. To complete this form, you would need to know if your contributions were made prior to 1980 or after 1980. If those contributions were made prior to 1980, they should be completed on the non-taxable side, meaning that they were taxed already. You will need to indicate a number between 0 and 100% in either the line being paid directly to you or to your financial institution. Then you would need to fill out your financial institution's name, address, city, state, zip, account number, and their phone number, followed by the type of account. You can only select one, an IRA, other qualified plan, 401, 401k, or 403b. If you are rolling over your payment to a institution or to yourself, you'll need to check the box that you are either having it mailed directly to you, or if you would like it to be sent to a financial institution, you can indicate to the attention of the financial institution's name. If your deductions were after 1980, they are pre-taxed, which means upon distribution, those funds will be taxed and you're going to complete it on the taxable side, following the same method that you did on the non-taxable. You're going to start off by putting the percentage that you want paid directly to you or to your financial institution. Again, the total must be 100%. If you elected to have it rolled over to a financial institution, you'll need to put their name, their address, the city, the state, the zip, the account number, and their phone number, as well as the type of account. The same, again, IRA, Other Qualified Plan, 401A, 401K, 403B, or the 457. If you are having it mailed to directly to you, then you can check that you want the check made to you. Or if you are having it go to a financial institution, you can indicate that you want it mailed directly to them and to someone's attention. The next form is the direct deposit and state tax withholding form. To begin, you would write in your social security number in line 26. Part F is the account for direct deposit of monthly benefits. This is where you will inform VRS of where your monthly benefits will be deposited. If you selected a payout option that included the PLOP payment, any PLOP funds being paid directly to you will also be deposited into this account. Line 27 is where you would write in your financial institutions named, followed by what type of an account it is by indicating checking or savings. Box 29 is where you will need to tape or staple a voided check for the account in which to receive your monthly payments. 
VRS will not deposit funds into an account that your name is not on the account. If you've indicated a savings account, you must ask for the financial institution's deposit statement for a savings account, which would include your name, your address, the bank or financial institution, your routing number, and your checking account number on it. Part G is your state tax withholding for the monthly benefits. You will have the option of choosing one of the following that you do not want VRS to deduct state taxes from your monthly benefit, or that you do want state taxes deducted from your retirement check. You would need to then follow it by the number of exemptions you want to claim. The rule of thumb is the higher the number of exemptions, the less taxes would come out. You can claim a personal exemption, age or blindness, and then followed by the total exemption amount. You can also withhold an additional dollar amount by indicating the dollar amount that you want it to have deducted per month. Next is the Federal Tax Withholding Part 1 form. Before completing the Federal Tax Withholding form, you may want to consult a tax preparer. In completing Part H, which is the Federal Tax Withholding, from your monthly benefit you would select one of the federal filing status that you are single or married filing separately, you are married filing jointly or qualifying widow or widower, or you're the head of the household. Check only if you are unmarried and pay more than half of the cost of keeping up a home for yourself and a qualifying individuals. Next, you would need to choose one of the options below, that you do not want federal withholding taxes from your monthly benefit, or that you want to have VRS calculate my federal income taxes withholding in accordance with the tax formula as published in the IRS Publications 15 based on the following selections. Income from a job and or multiple pensions or annuities, including the spouse's job, pension, or annuity. You would complete the step if you, one, have income from a job or more than one pensions or annuity, or two, are married filing jointly and your spouse receive income from a job or a pension or annuity. You would need to complete the items below. Item A, if you or your spouse have one or more jobs, then enter the total taxable annual pay from all jobs, plus any income entered in other adjustments item A, for the jobs less the deductions entered in other adjustments, item B, for the jobs otherwise enter zero. B, if you or your spouse has any other pensions or annuity that pay less annually than this one, enter the total annual taxable payments from all lower paying pensions or annuity. If not, enter zero. Then you need to total the amounts from line item A and line item B. Next, let's go down to claiming your dependents or other credits. If your total income will be $200,000 or less, or $400,000 or less if married filing jointly, you would multiply the number of qualified children under the age of 17 by 2,000. You would then need to multiply the number of other dependents by $500. Add other credits such as foreign tax credits and education tax credit. Then you'll need to add all of those line items together and enter that number here. Lastly is the other adjustments, which is optional. Line item A says, enter other income not from jobs or pensions or annuity payments. If you want tax withholding on any income you expect this year that won't have withholdings, enter the amount of other incomes here. Part B, 
is your deductions. If you expect to claim deductions other than the basic standard deductions and want to reduce your withholding, use the deductions worksheet on page 3. Enter the results here. Line C says extra tax withholding. Enter any additional taxes you want to withhold from each payment here. The last form, Part H, is the Federal Tax Withholding Section, Part 2. Let's start with number one. Here you would enter your 2022 itemized deduction from Schedule A of your 1040 form. For number two, you would enter one of the following. 25,900 if you're married, filing jointly, or a qualifying widow or widower. You would enter 19,400 if you're head of household, or you would enter $12,950 if you're single or married, filing separately. Line three is, if line one is greater than line two, you would subtract line two from line one and enter the results here. If line two is greater than line one, you would enter zero. Number four says, if line three equals zero and you or your spouse are 65 or older, you would enter the following. $1,750 if you're single or head of household. $1,400 if you are a qualified widow or widower are married and one of you is under the age of 65, or you would enter $2,800 if you're married and both of you are age 65 or older. Number five says, enter the estimate of your student loan interest, deductible IRA contributions, and certain other adjustments from part two of schedule one of your form 1040 on line five. And lastly, on line six, you would add line three through five and enter the results as other adjustments on line item B, which is the previous form. After completing the VRS retirement application, you can scan and email your completed application directly to the Consolidated Benefits Office using benefits at vbschools.com or you can mail the completed application directly to Virginia Retirement System, where their address is located on the upper left-hand side of page one of the application. Or you can hand deliver the completed application to the Plaza Annex. After hours, you can drop your completed application in the secure drop box located in the entranceway of our building 24-7, 365 at 641 Carriage Hill Road, Virginia Beach, Virginia, 23452. We do not recommend using the inner office mail to submit your completed application. If you should have any questions, don't hesitate to contact the Consolidated Benefits Office at 757-263 one zero six zero. Thank you for watching this presentation. We hope you found it to be resourceful and will help you in completing your retirement application.